What's up, everybody? Welcome back to your favorite New York Jets subscription podcast, Badlands. Two weeks in a row, Will Parkinson, host of the TOJ pod back. I brought him back because he correctly predicted the Jets were going to beat the Eagles. So that merits a back-to-back week appearance. Will, how you doing? We're going to do like 15 minutes of trade deadline, baseless speculation and chatter. Yeah, we, we got the two-point conversion being a big deal in the game, a late turnover. We got the Tony Adams pick in there. We got something up. Oh, CJ Mosley getting fired up about two years ago. We uh we did a good job on, on Friday. We did. I am very happy with how we how we landed here. Let's start let's start with Hartman. What what are your thoughts on this this move, the decision to trade him? Why did this go so wrong? I think not that they spent a ton of money on Hartman, but they go above and beyond to the we're gonna have a special role for him. He's all over hard knocks. He's gonna be this exciting part of the offense. He's playing with the starters a bit in the preseason. And then just it falls apart like extremely quickly. What what the hell happened here and how hard should we hit Joe Douglas on this one? Or is it something that you just kind of shrug your shoulders at and keep it moving? Yeah, I mean I <laughs> I know it's the easy thing to do is oh yeah, four first of all, four million bucks in today's NFL. Um not a lot of money as much as it, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, paying 4 million bucks for a, a th- number three, number four receiver. Look, I thought he'd have a bigger role. He obviously was good on the Chiefs for the last couple of years. The guy was a second round pick and there was all the rumors McCagnan wanted him back in the day uh, during that draft and the, the Chiefs traded up above them and got him. And it was like, oh, wow, the Jets have this 4-2 guy, can be an electrifying, you know, piece on special teams, can be somebody that can do that jet sweeps, kind of fill the Barrios role. Maybe, you know, some thought he could be better than that. I went to a couple practices, not open to the public this year, and Hardman was running with the twos and the threes. And I was like, this is a little weird. Like, Cobb's getting a lot of burn. Like, <laughs> this, uh, you know, Xavier Gibson at that point wasn't getting a ton of burn, but it was like, that was a, that was when Corey Davis uh, at that point was still there, um, just for that brief week. And it was like, oh, all right, maybe Hardman's like wide receiver four. And look, I think it's a little frustrating from the aspect of there didn't seem to be a real effort to make it work. It's not like they've used Xavier Gibson a lot in the offense either. I know he's done, he did a ton of motion stuff against Denver, which was really good in the run game. He was, you know, seemingly pretty banged up against the Eagles. He wasn't really on specials at all and had the one, uh, you know, one reverse, you know, jet sweep, whatever you want to call it. I just feel like it's, do I give Joe Douglas a hard time for it? No. Do I think it's, it's still a miss. I mean, he was a guy who was an early free agency. It felt like, he was a penciled in like this is a guy that can provide this dynamic game breaking speed once, twice a game at minimum. And he contributed in two Super Bowl teams. So like, why can't he contribute here with the Jets when there's probably a lack of other guys other than Garrett Wilson? You're like, wow, you know, there's they some nice weapons, but they're not wow pieces. So I guess kind of in hindsight, I, I felt like going back to the Chiefs for day three swaps was like the most biggest lock of all time. I wish you could bet on trade trade compensation because that one was like pretty much a given. I just feel like it sucks it didn't work out, but I'm glad at least they've done this now two years in a row where uh, Jacob Martin, Bryce Huff took Jacob Martin's role really early on last year. And it was like, oh, we paid this Jacob guy. Martin, man. I've totally forgot that name. Just yeah, like one we, of those just we, pops out of the head. They literally signed him. He was fine, but like. Bryce Huff took his role and he's a UDFA and he took his role. And now hopefully Bryce Huff's going to get paid. And obviously it's worked out. And they, they cut bait on Jacob Martin right away. He said, you know what? This wasn't the right fit. Go play somewhere else. We'll, we'll take some of the dead cap hit and we'll take, pick up a, you know, a 2024 fifth rounder. It's it kind of felt like the same thing here where it's like, you know, a couple million, they they free up at 1.3 million bucks in cash. Maybe they need it during the deadline, hopefully, which we'll talk about in a second. And if they don't, at least like McCall Hardman's not going to be in the locker room. He had done a really good job of saying all the right things. That said, it kind of felt like we were one week away from like F this place, like, yep. and it started to get ugly. So yeah, I just, it sucks. It didn't work out, but at the same time, it's hard to make too big of a deal of it. Cause like other, I don't know. It just, it, it's a $4 million signing that had a lot of upside, but if he didn't work out, he didn't work out. Exactly. I, I don't think it's frustrating that, Cobb has a role, but Hardman doesn't. But at the end of the day, there's other ways to fix and solve that, including giving Gibson more time, activating Brownlee, or prospectively going to get somebody else. I Look, I I don't want to get out over our skis with Gibson. He's been very exciting as a punt returner. He's shown some juice on jet sweeps. I think he has like 18 total yards of offense this year. It's early. Now, this is my, and I tweeted this, this is my overly ambitious, if everything goes well, player comparison. He's got some, like, early career Jamison Crowder vibes to him. 
Like, people forget Crowder was, like, a great punt returner early in his career. The version he was on the Jets, he was not that guy anymore. Uh, but I don't know. They kind of, like, look the same a little bit sometimes when they're out there. And maybe the Jets are hoping that by the end of next year, he can be that kind of player. He's not going to be that this year. They don't need him to be. Can he, you know, open some things up with the jet sweeps? Can he give them, you know, two to three touches a game on offense and be a good punt returner? That That's all they need if they're going to do some other things in the receiver room. Now, in terms of... I see there's two main positions the Jets may acquire somebody at. I think from terms of getting rid of people, Carl Lawson, who the hell is going to take him? I have no idea. At receiver, I don't think, as much as I like to tweet a Sopranos gif about it, I don't think Devontae or Mike Evans is going to happen in season. The Bucks are better than everyone expects, so I don't think they're really going to be sellers. And with Devontae, it just feels like a next year thing when Rodgers is back. Uh, so for receiver... The, the random list of names that are out there. You couldn't talk Corey Davis out of retirement. You could try to get Hunter Renfro from the Raiders. You can try to get Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy from the Broncos, who will be in fire sale mode. You could try to get Hollywood Brown from the Cardinals. Um, you could go get an old friend like Jeff Smith, who's floating around. What's a realistic name that the Jets are, are poking around on and who is someone I didn't even mention that they could consider? Yeah, so uh, the Jamison Crowder comp is funny. Jamison Crowder won special teams player of the week this week for punt return. Yeah. There it is. Uh, so uh, shout out to Blake Cashman, uh, friend of the TOJ pod. Is Got it. Future, high, future Hall of Famer. Uh, highest graded linebacker in football uh, <laughs> through six weeks. Do an extension. Um, it, is cool if, it is cool to see some yeah. of these guys, by the way, that like – Actually, whatever. That's a whole other story. But I don't get mad about those. It's happy when those those guys didn't work here, and there was a reason they left, and then they work yes. out. I'm I'm cool with it. Yes. Um, receiver wise, yeah, I think it's receiver and like a swing tackle guard combo. Leal Collins obviously makes a ton of sense. Has played left guard, played right tackle, etc. If it's somebody else, I saw Ezra Cleveland's name 